In today's video, we're gonna go over the T7 science section and we're gonna go over everything that you need to know for the A and P questions that you'll see on the test. Now, a lot of students spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's on the test, but don't worry, we got you. That's what this video is gonna be all about. You'll know everything that you need to study. Now, before we get into it, check out the links in the description below. There are links to our free T7 practice test, our T7 online course and mobile app, and our free T Facebook study group. All great resources for you. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, the AMP topics on the science section are one of the more difficult uh, topics because there is so much to know. There's so many systems and you need to know quite a bit about it. Now, this is also going to be 18 of the 50 questions that you'll have on the science section. So it does make up the majority of the science section uh, of the test. So the first thing we'll cover is the organization of the human body. So first, you'll need to know the organization of the human body and the levels of the organization and the body cavities. So important things to know would include things like the seven levels of organization, all the way from chemical to organism, uh, and body cavities and their related terminology for those body cavities, and words like distal, dorsal, uh, midline, and prone position. In addition, you'll also need to be familiar with the body planes and the four types of human tissue. Now, it's essential for you to know about homeostasis and the feedback mechanisms, both the positive and negative, and understanding the differences between them. Now, when it comes to the cardiovascular system, this is one that you will definitely see questions on your test. There is almost no chance that you won't see questions. So, Really, as someone applying to a medical or healthcare program, the expectation is that you will have a really good and deep understanding of the heart, the blood flow, and its anatomy. So you can expect a handful of questions just on these various aspects of the cardiovascular system. Um, and you'll need to know things like the flow of blood through the heart, like the back of your hand. Um, and you will see a couple questions on this. So the core things that you need to know um, that will be questions related to the cardiovascular system is understanding what blood is, what elements blood is made of, and its functions. Uh, the four common blood groups and the differences between them understanding how blood circulates through the heart and the anatomy of the heart, understanding deoxygenated and blood and oxygenated blood, understanding the cardiac system, and understanding what an EKG is and how to read an EKG. Now, the questions in the cardiovascular system are going to be pretty detailed. They're not gonna give you softball questions. They're gonna have detailed questions like, uh, when the pulmonic valve closes and the aortic valve opens, it releases what type of blood. So you won't encounter simple questions on the TIS exam that would be something like, when this valve closes and this one opens, what does it release? Well, they're gonna say it's blood, but they wanna know what type of blood or, or which type of blood. So it's gonna be very detailed. So you really need to know uh, all of these topics and, and especially the cardiovascular system. And when it comes to the respiratory system, as with all the systems, you need to know the anatomy of the respiratory system. So that includes things like the upper and lower tracts, the nasal cavity, the larynx, the pharynx, and the trachea. Now, uh, amongst other things to be familiar with, I would say um, it's the respiratory functions and the breathing mechanics. So for example, internal respiration, external res respiration. Potential questions that you might see on the exam for the respiratory system include things like uh, the oxygen concentration in blood that returns from systemic circulation is, or which organ not belonging to the respiratory system plays a direct role in external respiration, or maybe um, what structure changes shape and the mechanics of breathing. So those are all things that you should be familiar with. But for the gastrointestinal system, uh, you'll be expected to know the anatomy of the digestive system. So that is things like knowing the path of how food travels uh, through and into the system. And you'll note that when taking the TIS exam um, and preparing for a healthcare career, there will always be two expectations. You should know the anatomy of all systems we'll cover as a prerequisite. And the second thing you should know is that the function of the various parts of the anatomy and how it relates to one another 
for example, how food is digested, where does it start, uh, and then what happens, and what happens after that. So you need to know the whole process. So it's about understanding through and through what does this system do, how does it apply to the human body, to this particular system. And if you can answer these questions, you've got a good grasp on A&P and you'll do great on the test. So with that being said, here is what you will be expected to know about the gastrointestinal system. You'll, you'll really need to know the digestive system and what it consists of, including the digestive tract, understanding what the accessory organs are and how they contribute to digestion, know where food does and does not pass through the digestive system, understand the mechanical and chemical digestion and the differences between those. Now for the reproduction system, here are some tips outlining what you need to know about the reproductive system uh, prior to taking the TIS exam. So you need to understand the components of the reproduction system uh, down to a really biological and medical level, the terms in both uh, male and females, of course, understanding how the sexual reproduction processes work in humans from uh, development, puberty, and sexual maturity, understanding what the male and female reproductive systems contribute to the reproduction and birth of an infant. Now, the urinary system is the final system within the organization of systems uh, to, to study. Um, and this is kind of before moving on to the support and movement systems, the systems that have more to do with like integration and control. So I'll say it again for the people way in the back, it's important to know more than just the anatomy. You really need to know these systems in depth. So uh, it's important to know the urinary system functions. Uh, it's important to understand the, the, the whole, you know, how excretion, absorption, uh, filtration, and and what the systems work with it, within the urinary system. All right, so we have covered a lot so far. Let's take a quick check to see what A&P systems you're feeling most confident about, least confident about. Leave a comment below and let us know. We'll, we'll respond to that, help you out, give you resources. And if you are liking this video, of course, like, subscribe to the channel so that you are getting all of the notifications for new videos that are coming out. We have a ton coming out, so I don't want you to miss those. All right, so let's get into the skeletal system. Now, for the exam, it's going to expect you to be able to answer questions on you know, all of this uh, skeletal system, but more specifically the anatomy and the functions of the skeletal system. So you'll see topics like how bones are formed, how bones are remodeled, and the changes in bone development as a person grows from you know, an infant or a toddler all the way to adulthood. So here's some other core concepts to study. Uh, there's two main parts of the skeletal system, the axial system and the appendicular skeleton. So the skeletal system consists of bones, cartilage, and ligaments, and you should know what they are and what they do and how they work. So it is likely that you will see questions on bone shape and structure. So you should know the different types of bones. You've got the long bones, flat bones, irregular bones, uh, the sesamoids, and short bones. So an example of something that you're not going to see is what is a flat bone? That would just be too easy and that's not what this test is about. And when we get to the muscular system, you'll need to know uh, you know, quite a bit, but but we can really summarize it into like the anatomy and mus the anatomy of the muscular system, including the types of muscle tissues, the roles of the muscular system in movement, the physiology of muscle operations, and or, I'm sorry, muscle contractions. Um, understanding the three types of joints. Now, examples of realistic questions that you may have to answer on the T7 exam would include things like. Um, maybe which muscle or region surrounded by a muscle is under voluntary control, which contributes to the uh, striated appearance of skeletal muscle. The integumentary system is going to be the last subject within the support and movement topic of AMP. And this system is a body system comprised of the skin and the accessory structures, including the hair, uh, the sebaceous and sweat glands, and your nails. Um, now this system protect, protects the body and maintains homeostasis and provides sensory information about the external environment around you. Now in addition to knowing the anatomy of the system, it's important to know how all the functions work together, really the physiology and how it relates to the whole body. 
Um, it's important to know what uh, the effects of aging are and cancer on the body. You'll be expected to know the layers of the epidermis, the hypodermis, and the various types of glands. Uh, those include things like sweat glands and the sebaceous glands. And it's, you'll also be expected to know what the uh, eccrine glands and the apocrine glands are. Now the last parts of AMP are all about integration and control. So this includes the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the lymphatic system. So the best way to prepare for the T7 exam is to simplify studying and focus on getting confident. Get everything you need to study in one place, and that's where Smart Edition Nursing helps you out. We have an awesome T7 online course that covers every topic, video lessons, practice tests, question banks, do it on the mobile app. It has uh, flashcards, so it's really everything organized for you so that you don't have to watch videos like this and kind of wonder what's on the test. We have it all for you, all ready to go. So check that out. There's a link in the description. Now the nervous system is quite complex and it's easy to overstudy this topic and to study the wrong thing. So as I've said, for every system, it's important to first know the anatomy of the nervous system. But secondly, it's important to understand all of the functions of the nervous system. So a little hint, there's going to be three main functions and we will go over those. Uh, but yes, you need to know both the anatomy and the physiology of, of all the systems. So it's important to know the nervous system on a detailed level, uh, which starts with two parts of the nervous system. This is the CNS and the PNS. And in addition to that, you'll be expected to know the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So here's what else you need to know, the anatomy of the brain and how it's broken up. And that's gonna be into three regions, the cerebellum, the brainstem, and the cerebrum. So you're gonna to need to know uh, the lobes of the brain, now neurons are a crucial part of the nervous system and you'll need to be familiar with the anatomy of neurons uh, which consists of the cell body, the dendrites, the axon, and the axon terminal. Um, you know, in addition to that, uh, another major part of the system is knowing the synaptic transmission and nerve impulses. Um, so this means understanding the difference between resting and action potential. So the endocrine system, I can't say that I've heard it enough times that you will see questions about hormones and the endocrine system on your test. So you'll really need to know hormones well and you know where they are and what they release and how they release them. So here's just a few of the functions of the endocrine system. Uh, it deals with things like water balance, ion regulation, growth metabolism, uh, blood glucose control, and the endocrine system releases chemical signals and there are several different types that you'll need to know um, and it's common to see questions about receptor molecules and how they interact with the body system to produce responses now hormones and their secretions as well as endocrine glands and their secretions will be a must know for the t7 exam so these are going to be a couple examples of realistic questions that you might see on the exam uh, it might be something like which hormone which hormones response is the increased secretion of cortisol or how does the human body ensure that uh, a hormone does not influence other cells by connecting to the wrong receptors um, which of the following symptoms could be expected in a person with Addison's disease? Or what decreased hormone levels may play an important part uh, or an important role in the loss of normal sleep-wake cycles, the circadian rhythms uh, with aging? So those are kind of examples of the level of detail that you'll see. Now for the lymphatic system, there is a lot in this system, uh, but there's a couple of key players in, that you'll need to know. And those are the spleen, the tonsils, the adenoids, the appendix, and the thymus gland. So you'll need to know the two types of lymphocytes, and those are the B and T cells. And when it comes to the T cells, you'll need to know about killer T cells killing host cells. And you could be asked questions like, why is a B cell that is stimulated by an encounter with a microbe to divide repeatedly and form a large population of identical B cells a positive addition to the body's defense strategy? That question has a lot to it, but you can break it down if you know these topics well. Uh, you might see questions like, which of the following is the correct series of the lymphatic system's defense mechanisms? Or, um, how do killer T cells recognize infected cells? Now there's four types of immunity to know, and those are the natural passive, natural active, artificial passive, and artificial active. 
Um, and so there's several uh, common diseases and disorders associated with the lymphatic system like lupus, type 1 diabetes, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So just remember, these questions are founded on testing your understanding of the system, the body, and each condition. So you'll need to answer these questions thinking like a healthcare worker. Questions you may be asked related to diseases and disorders uh, within the lymphatic system. You know, it could be things like which of the following diseases exhibits symptoms such as weakness, irritability, uh, heat intolerance, increased sweating, weight loss, and insomnia. Now remember, the AMP topics on the science section are going to be 18 of those questions. So you'll need to be studying biology, scientific reasoning, and chemistry, as well as math, English, and reading to pass your T7 and earn a competitive score for your school's program so that you can get expect, uh, accepted. Um, so don't stress if you've been taking your, your prereqs, that's definitely going to help you. And the bright side is that all of this information you've been studying, it was covered in AMP 1 and 2. And even if you have taken those, it's still good to brush up on that and we can definitely help you guys out with that. Um, so if it's been a while since you've taken your, your prereqs, um, an online course is, a, is the best way to refresh your knowledge and take lots of practice questions. And you can do this and, and you're going to do amazing. Everybody here at Smart Edition is rooting for you. So take studying one day at a time, get yourself uh, the, the T7 Smart Edition course, um, use it on your mobile app, use it on your laptop. So I'm sending you good energy, good vibes, and I can't wait to see you stick around for your learning journey. And when you do pass, come back to this video, leave a comment on your score. And until then, uh, check out our biology, scientific reasoning, and chemistry videos so that you get all those topics and you know what to study. All right, we'll see you after your test, after you pass.